Yep. We're doing a podcast on IT leadership and how to elevate you within your organization. Has anyone done that before? Welcome to the CIO Lifeline podcast, bringing you practical tips and advice from the front lines. I'm your host, Tony Darden. With me is Tom Doran. So Tom, let's jump right into this. Let's tell our viewers and listeners who we are and why we're doing this. And let's try and keep the history very small. <laughs> I'm going to do my very best. You said this is a two-hour intro. Is that what we're doing? My name's Tom Doran. I have been uh, in and around business in a variety of capacities for about 35 years. I uh, started out in commercial food service, uh, owned a couple of restaurants, uh, ultimately uh, developed a frozen burrito product uh, with a partner of mine, a childhood friend. We grew up and started our company, and we did that for about nine years. And then I, uh, when we sold that, we I uh, made the transition to uh, helping companies with software, and that's that's been a really great run. Uh, when I'm not at work, I'm very much a supporter of the YMCA. I, I volunteer for uh, both YUSA and our local YMCA, the YMCA of Greater Michiana. Uh, I live in Georgetown, Kentucky with my beautiful fiance. We have four children from 19 to 6, so we're a pretty active household. Uh, and I'm a big <laughs> Notre Dame fan, so, you know, Tony, we may wander into some of that uh, uh, as we weave through some of our more serious topics. So uh, how about yourself, Tony? Yeah. Give us a little background. Yeah. So I'm a 30-year veteran working with small and mid-sized organizations. And what I take the most pleasure in is looking for opportunities within an organization. You, know, you have slow, outdated technology. How can we transform that to help empower your employees, to help grow a top line? Of course, we want to grow the bottom line. But that's part of the fun of this industry or has been for me over the years. I consider myself a practical leader that aligns talent, systems, and processes with corporate objectives. I volunteer on different advisory boards, uh, most recently and still currently an advisory board for the Dynamics User Group. That's a Microsoft user-based community. And again, like all the others in the past, it's just uh, an incredible opportunity to network other folks and, and similar companies to understand their challenges that they go through. I live in Erie, Pennsylvania with my wife of eight years. I have two sons and a stepson. And as soon as the weather turns, I look forward to spending time by the pool and following this pipe dream of lowering my handicap on the golf course. Those, those, those days are long gone. So Tom, if you were to rewind the clock back, so I think this is important to have this kind of perspective. What got you into IT-based careers? Because I know you had a stint in, in food service and CEO and, and ownership of businesses, but, but here you are in the IT space. If you were to rewind that clock back, what brought you there? Uh, you know, if I'm uh, completely honest about that, Tony, pretty much blind luck. Um, you know, I had started out, I was always really interested in business. I went, as I, I would went to, uh, Indiana university at South Bend and, um, all, was always focused on running a business of my own. Um, and so I, I spent a lot of time sort of studying both the science of business, but then the tools of business and, and computers were really coming on strong, uh, in the late eighties as I graduated and <clears throat> I, was working for U.S. Food Service, and God bless everybody at U.S. Food Service because I'm telling you what, <laughs> delivering groceries is hard work. And uh, I get a I get a call from a friend who's I knew loosely that they were doing something with software, but I didn't really think that much about it. She said, "Hey, we're we're looking for somebody. Why don't you come in and talk to the owner?" And he basically says, "Look, you know, I'm kind of tired of trying to teach IT guys how to." how to sell to business people. What do you say? I take a business guy and I teach him a little bit about this computers. Now, 25 years yeah. later, uh, it appears I'm still wrong. How about yourself? Well, if I go back to the archives, I remember having this very conversation. Let's go back in time. 
Well, I, um, and I wish I could remember his name, but he was my fifth grade science teacher. And coming in the class that day, he had an Apple IIe computer. Mm. And you could tell this guy was jazzed up about just computers in general. And so in this science class, he takes the entire session, it was a 40-minute class at the time, and teaches us the basics of an Apple IIe and gave us exposure to the basic programming language. That's capitals, <laughs> B-A-S-I-C, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And I, I was hooked. And at the time, I'm struggling to think because he wants us to do, you know, give him a topic for the science fair. You know, and everybody has, you know, the, you know, the volcano or, you know, he puts, puts the liquid in the top and it blows up, right? But um, I said, hey, can I spend after school time and you teach me this language so that I can create a program as my science fair project? Poof. No problem, right? Because this, this dude was jazzed to begin with. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did, you know, and I had a booth and it was a, it was just a, like a multiple choice math program, you know, it would give you, you know, what is, I don't know, eight times seven. I mean, we're fifth graders, right? Yeah. And you had choices to pick. And if you picked right, congratulations, it would track your points. It was just very basic, but, but man, I, I was hooked from there. And, and my parents, God bless them. Cause we didn't have a lot of money growing up. They always found a way to, to get me a computer and, and, and literature and just anything to help kind of feed it. Yeah. Um, and I, and I stayed hungry. So, but the first almost 20 years of my career, if I include, um, um, you know, just getting out of college, was in application development. Mm. And then, you know, long story, I'll try and shorten this, but we but, but ended up and reverse you worried, engineering. You were worried about me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's right. Can't follow my own advice. Do as I say, not as I do. No. That's right. Um, but I, I um, you know, so I reverse engineered a, a program at the place of business I was at and they and the company wasn't wasn't ready to to use it in a production way because I'm this twenty something kid. They're gonna bet all the you know they're gonna bet the farm on yeah. running their business on my stuff, right? You know. Um, so I took the next year and just refined it, and and you know, I finally got there with them. But what it did was it exposed me to the business side of IT, and I and I heard you mentioning that as well. Uh, which I think is very important. It's a theme that's going to come out in this podcast. Let's let's go into why are we doing this, right? Every content creator thinks they have something new to offer, right? I mean, in 2022 alone, there was over 4 million of folks just like us, you know, creating a podcast. But when we look back at our careers and how IT has evolved and, and it's changed significantly, but the pace at which companies embrace that reality within their leadership structure is lagging. So we want to talk about how to catch that up while covering the table stakes, right? Traditional IT isn't going away, but what was 100% of your day 20, 30 years ago should be 25% of your day today. That's the goal. That's what we're setting out to achieve here. For those that are um, tied to traditional IT, so you think about your tech support, I mean, that's grounded in traditional IT, right? And, and that's never going to go away. I mean, we got to keep the lights on, keyboards break, wires need run, servers need spun up, operating system. you know what I mean? I can go on and on and on. But as a leader, if you could only make that part of IT 25% of your day and 75% is spent strategically thinking and being holistic about your organization as a whole and getting that seat at the table, that's the goal. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting topic. And, you know, when you and I first started kicking this idea around, that, that really, I suppose, is what got me most excited about doing this. Other than you and I usually have a lot of fun together. But, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> as you say, you, you know, nobody ever calls up IT and just says, hey, want to let you know everything's great. Oh, all good. Ha, so true. 
you know, and so when you, you called it table stakes, but, but it really is table stakes. The, the challenge is it's also critical table stakes, but, you know, let somebody's email go down for a couple hours. Email. Oh. It, you know, but the, but the broader strategic opportunity for a company when they can really synthesize a strategy around all of that. We got we to gotta take care of the basics, but we really need to have an eye towards our strategic opportunities through the use of technology and improved processes. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited to, to talk through some of the stuff that we have coming up. All right. So, Tom, topics that we're going to cover here. So, keep me honest. I mean, leadership's huge, right? There's going to be many that cover leadership. And by the way, we have, this is, this is, this is three years of content. Last time I, I, I looked through our C-scroll of activity. Business partnership. I'm going to pound this one into the ground. Being a partner to the business. This is a common theme. Strategy. How do you align that strategy to corporate goals? Talent. Talent is super important because you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. Security. You don't want to be the next ransomware headline, any kind of infiltration, exfiltration. I mean, that those threats never go away. They're constantly evolving. You've got your digital transformation, but a, a key piece within that is is are all those integrations with outside systems, which introduce additional vulnerability, right? You know, it reminds me of a story, a mentor of mine, Brian Lurie, and I hope to have him on this podcast. He used to talk about security and in terms of degrees of risk. So he had a home security company come, you know, come to his place of residence. I know you have many different offerings. I want the Cadillac offering that you have. I want to be 100% secure. 100%. Said He said, wow, all right. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out your windows and we're going to, we're going to brick them in. Okay, and then we're going to walk around your house and decide how wide you want the alligator moat to be, the different types of alligators that you want to stock, how you're going to feed to them, tend to them, how many layers of barbed wire, da, 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 right? It, it gets ridiculous quick. You start to chuckle. But the point is, uh, you can throw endless money at this. There's really, and that's just, that's just covering you from the ground, right? right? What about an aerial assault? Like I said, this can go haywire on you here. But it's all about degrees of risk and how much risk you're willing to assume. It's no different with companies, right? If 80% is the floor, because I believe there's a floor. So if I want to go from 80 to 85% secure, now, are you truly 85% secure? Bear with me here. Cost X. And you reach a threshold where each percentage becomes exponentially more expensive. And then it starts to affect the user experience. So what's the right balance? What are some of the tools that you should be considering? What can you do starting from that? I'm calling it the 80% floor. Tune in. We're going to be talking about that. Be a good one. I hope, I, I think we're going to get a lot of interest. AI is another one. You think about three years ago when RPA and even ML, machine learning, was a uh, hot topic. Powerful tools helped you get in, into the automation game while AI, chat GPT, open AI, these are the next steps and they're significant game changers. We're going to dig into that as well. Well, I'm looking forward to the conversations and I'm really excited to meet some of the guests we have lined up. It's, it's going to be a really great ride. I appreciate all of you tuning in and hopefully you'll join us for future episodes. We'll keep each episode to approximately 30 minutes. We will release episodes twice a month, targeting the first and third Thursdays. Don't forget to check out CIOLifeline.com to capture all content. Tom, for those that like to plan further out, what are some of the other topics we look to cover? Well, you know, we talked about a lot of it, but we're going to spend some time talking about security, best practices. Everybody's talking about a digital transformation. But again, what does that mean? cloud, hybrid, what's the right balance there? So we'll spend uh, a nice bit of conversation around that piece of strategy. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you for your time today. And again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. We look forward to you tuning in next time when we talk about redefining IT and being a partner to the business.
as Tony said, visit CIOlifeline.com and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in a future session. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Take care.